after everything you've been through. So what do you say? They distance themselves. They distance. So what do you say to the people who distance themselves from you? Shame on you. Shame on you. After what I did for you, for your children, helped you make a lot of money. Uh, and you couldn't come to visit me for eight and a half months. You couldn't send a card, a letter. I was getting mail from children in other countries. And somehow, 12 and 13 year old little girls were finding the correct address. They were getting their cards and letters to me. And people here that I taught their children before a television show, they were very happy customers before Dance Moms. And then during it, they were stars, they were making money, they were on top of the world. And you're just gonna dump me? It's not hurtful anymore because you realize real quick who your friends are, real quick. Is it also less hurtful just knowing how far you've come and everything you've overcome as well, you know, is that? Yes, it is, it is and isn't. I, I mean, I don't know how you don't give credit to someone. They all, all of them, all the kids, all the moms, act as if I had nothing to do with the show, nor my studio. Well, my friend, John Carolla, created the show. It was his idea when he saw my kids and met them in Vegas. So I don't know how this would have happened in another dance studio. Without you. Well, without my building in my studio and them flying into Pittsburgh, they interviewed, not auditioned, keep that in mind, they interviewed 30 families for the show. They did. 27 were my students at my studio. Okay. Two were friends of mine that had little boys that I thought were hilarious, and one was Kathy, who was also a colleague of mine. So if they would have gone to another studio down the street or an hour away from me, how would they have even known about it? That's, it's all both. It's gotta start somewhere, right? Yes. Yeah. And the kids block it out and they forget and oh, it was toxic, blah, blah, blah. Well, let's go back to Pittsburgh. I'll show you the house she used to live in and then we'll go see the house she live in now. That part. The, you remember that happening? Look at it. Abby's got receipts. Abby's yes. got receipts. Yes. <laughs> you remember those bags of money you were bringing home? Yeah. Let, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll remind you of what it was. <laughs> Let's talk about the uh, GoFundMe that you're a part of. Yes. Yeah, right? Okay, so there is, a, it's a, the Feeding the Children, correct? Yes. Why ha was it important for you to attach yourself to this initiative? Teaching children all around the world on Zoom. Mm. Just the other day, I was asking them what the Easter Bunny was going to bring. And they all said money. <laughs> I, I didn't understand that, but I guess in the plastic eggs, you get you dollars. Put the, yeah. the dollars and the coins and stuff. So. I'm thinking, here you kids are, and I say this all the time okay. to the children. You are lucky. Be grateful. You are healthy. Your mom and dad can afford for you to take these lessons. You go to these competitions. You wear these expensive costumes. Be grateful. When I found out about Katarina's Club and what Bruno Serrato was doing, I had to be a part of it. Uh, Gloria Gaynor's involved. Uh, okay. You know, there's a lot of housewives that are involved. And what better thing to do, what better charity could I be involved in than feeding children? I mean, come on. So Feed the Kids Initiative, how can people at home get involved? Feed the Kids Initiative, I'm going to be posting on my Instagram and they can go there and there's a link so that they can go right to it and get involved. There's also Katarina's Club. There's Bruno Serrato. There's a lot of ways you can find out about it, but I wanna reach out to the children. You have been making an impact on so many children's lives for so long. I actually wanna to talk to you about one of your students, Jojo Siwa. Yes. You know, she recently revealed that she wasn't invited to the Kids' Choice Awards. And you know, a lot there was no reason given, but some fans believe that maybe it was because she recently came out and it was her sexuality. What did you make of that? I didn't think that. And I don't know why she aired all that. I, I would have gone and done something else that night. You know, as a child growing up, I was heavy. And kids are cruel. People are cruel. In this, in this town, it's tough. So my mom 
or dad would flip it. If I came home from school crying or upset I wasn't invited to this birthday party or this boy asked another girl, uh, we were like, Psh. my mom and dad were like, oh, you know, fooey on them, who cares? who cares? We're gonna do this. We're going away that weekend anyway. So you couldn't have gone to the party anyway. So I don't know why she didn't just flip it around. Uh, she's been good to them. Yes. They've been good to her. So I really don't know what the problem was. I just know that that kid is a workaholic. Have you talked to her? Have you talked to Jojo recently? Yes. How yeah, she, she was just commenting on something on my Instagram. Uh, you know, she's a busy kid. She makes work. She creates work for herself to do. When we were shooting the television show and all those kids were on the bus playing with each other's hair and talking about boys, Jojo was on that computer. She was uploading her own YouTube uh, videos. She was doing this. She was doing that. She was hustling. She was hustling back yeah. then. Yes. Yes. And now looking at her journey, what do you think? Because obviously I don't think any of us could have predicted the type of impact she was gonna make, especially since coming out. Cause now she's reaching a whole demographic of kids who I feel like, you know, are underrepresented on shows on Nickelodeon, for example. So uh, absolutely, you know, absolutely. Uh, it's funny. I used to always say to the girls, one in six, I would tease them. If they were doing something goofy, you know, just little girls fooling around. And I would say, one in six girls, one in six. One in six are going to... Be gay. One in six. Yes. So... So she's the one. She was the one. <laughs> I was right. She was the one. She's you know? Yeah. And uh, she's, I mean, come on, a household name. Uh, every store you walk into. Uh, and and it, it's not going to stop. It's going to change. Sure. And it's going to you know, flip the switch. Do you feel like it's changing now? Yes, yes, yeah. I do. But hey, if I was 18 years old and I had already made her kind of money, <laughs> I'd never have to work again. I could teach children all over the world for free. I could, that's what I would do. But that's not what she wants to do, right? No, no, she's gonna manage kids, she'll have her own record label, she'll be doing everything. I love it, what do you think of the new haircut? Well, <clears throat> uh-huh. I'm a firm believer in the long hair. Right. Because you can put it in a bun. You can put it in a ponytail. You can braid it. You're thinking about the it. dance classes and, I'm the, thinking about the, and dance, the routines. The, 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 if one of my competition kids got that haircut, they, they wouldn't. They sign a contract. They can't change their hair from the beginning of the season to the end. Uh, well, when, you had that po when you've had that ponytail as long as she's had, I feel like it, at some point you're going to want to just chop it off. Absolutely. And her hair was damaged from dyeing it, from the product in it, from pulling it back, although she's never gonna have a wrinkle, and from uh, just the glitter in it and all that stuff. So I do think it needed cut. And it's so much easier when your hair's, hey, I was completely bald. So I know how easy it is. So as someone who has lost her hair due to chemotherapy, what was your reaction to the whole Will Smith Oscar slap and, and right. that joke? To clarify, I didn't really lose my hair like that. My friends cut it out. When you go through chemo, there's something, some substance, whatever, that comes out of your pores. Wow. And it goes in, you know, in your hair and it makes it sticky and weird. And that's what was going on with my hair. Because when I went into the hospital, I had a clip in it and it was up. And from laying on the bed, Actually, they just cut the whole entire thing out. Okay, so it was gonna go anyway. Right, exactly. But I'm blaming my friends for cutting it out. <laughs> All right. But so, still, you had no hair. I, no, no. You had no hair. No, so, and, it, and, it, and for a woman who had a lot of hair, it was traumatic. It was awful. But I was laying in a hospital room getting chemo 24 hours a day. I was getting lumbar injections. And I was getting spinal taps. I had a lot more to worry about than my hair. Uh, I, I don't know what to say. I was at Debbie Allen's new studio, which is in Shonda Rhimes Performing Arts Center. Right. That's why I was there. And I was talking to Debbie, and then out of the elevator came Jada Pinkett Smith, and it was like a whirlwind. It was like, whew, and she came like right over to me. And she had this stunning gold metallic a dress on Gorgeous. some strange concoction. It was beautiful. And I was like, oh my goodness, hello. And she was like, hello. And we started to talk right about the hair. Really? 
Absolutely. Right away. Right, immediately. Wow. And so, I, I don't know, maybe her daughter was a fan of the show, I'm thinking, or whatever, but it, that was it. And we were standing right in front of the Will Smith room that he donated at the Shonda Rhimes Performing Arts Center. So, it was so, all very surreal. Well, let me ask you this. Do you feel like Chris Rock's joke warranted that slap? No. Nothing warrants hitting another person. I've been physically assaulted myself on the TV show. So I, I know what that's all about. It's scary, it's hurtful, it's shocking. Uh, and Chris Rock actually has been in my dance studio and I taught his daughter privates. Wow. Yes, acrobatics. Wow. Okay, yes. I love and that. he's a great guy. Of course. I made him sit there, he had to get a pen, he had to write everything down. He was like, why, why, why? Yeah, he was great. How did Jada seem at that event, by the way? Because that was her first like public appearance. Since it was. Happened. She was like a whirlwind of gold lame. Just floating by. Just whoosh, yeah. in and out. Uh, she was there for the duration. She was there uh, humbly uh, accepting praise for the, the donations that they made. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was herself. You know, the show must go on. Yeah.